There ain't nothing, 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 nothing like that first cry. I still get all, yeah. I don't even know if y'all caught it, but if you guys look, I've never watched my pregnancy video on my, a phone, but if you guys look close enough, at least on the laptop, you can definitely see that I let you guys see a little bit, like I've made it. You can see me in the bathtub actually giving birth. All right, y'all, so <clears throat> anyways, What's up, y'all, and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to be talking about my postpartum journey, adjusting journey, um, just the difference between pregnancy and um, my baby being Earthside. So let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Let me tell you guys, once again, Thank you so much for connecting, resonating, appreciating, loving, wishing well on me and my family. Um, I still am like, it's, am I really a mom? Like, is this real? Um, I still look at my baby and I'm like, I really crafted you. Like, I really made you in my womb. Like, I just still, I mean... Pregnancy for me was the most beautiful, powerful, empowering experience ever. If it was up to me, I would be pregnant all the time, every time. Um, literally right after I gave birth, I, I stood up and I was like, I need 19 more kids. Let's make it to 20. Like pregnancy was everything for me. I felt beautiful. I felt powerful. I've never felt more in tune with my body ever. Um, I've never felt more connected with my body. I've, the connection that me and my baby had in the womb was just, it was, it was incredible. Um, delivering my baby was a whole nother level of, it was an honor. Like another reason why I feel so called to share my journey is because I had the most beautiful journey that I could have imagined. Delivering my baby was like insane. I feel like I'll have to do a whole birth video on it because it was the most beautiful experience. It was, it was not that it was fun. It was like, I couldn't believe that my body just knew what to do. I couldn't believe the strength of my body. I couldn't believe the connection of my body because when I'm telling you, it was nothing like anybody ever told me. It wasn't painful. It wasn't like, when is this going to be over? I was not even like, if you guys want a birth story video, then I'll do that with my birth partner because he came through for me. So if you want a video on that, I will do a whole separate video on that. But I say that to say pregnancy was beautiful. Delivery was beautiful. The first week with my baby was beautiful. And then I got mastitis. So everything was kind of like, wait a minute. I had this whole beautiful birth journey. I had a beautiful delivery and now I'm dealing with this. And mind you, at the time, I didn't even know what it was. I also want to say that posting has definitely been a little bit more challenging than I thought because I just thought mommy was going to be easy and effortless like pregnancy and delivering was. And it definitely has days where my son is like, nah, you sitting here with me all day. I ain't taking naps. I need to be held all day. And he's the boss. True. He's the boss. True. So sometimes, <laughs> so sometimes content just has to wait. 
but there is an app called Later, and the virtual assistant who helped me curate my feed, which the content is rolling out now, um, we schedule all of our posts on Later. And Later is great because you can schedule everything right then and there. So if I have a deep thought while I'm pumping or doing a night feed, or I have a caption or information to share, I can store it all on Later with the post. And then when it's time to post and we have everything scheduled out, I literally just copy and paste and it goes straight to Instagram. I have so much information to share and with everything that's going on, this app has changed the game because it allows me to automate, manage, and visualize my feed just the way that I want it. Speak on it. I'm sorry, man. I'm, this is my hype, man. <laughs> you guys can get one month of the growth plan for free by checking out the description box for the code in my link. I forgot what I was saying. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, oh, I come from a very female dominant family and no one in my family has i'm one of 26 grandkids um my mom is the second oldest of eight kids just from my grandma and i was also a teen pregnancy and i grew up in the same house as my aunties and my uncles because my youngest auntie is only like five years older than me i'm giving you a whole family background but that's not important anyways i'm saying this to say that i kind of was grouped in with the eight and then when my aunties and uncles started having kids, they are technically my cousins, but they're more like my nieces and nephews. Like y'all know what I'm saying. So I saw a lot of births growing up and no one in my family had a beautiful hospital birth. And then as I got older, I just became, you know, that one cousin that's that weird cousin, that vegan cousin, that like free thinking person in my family. So it was kind of like, we already know she's gonna do something that everybody else isn't gonna do because she just be doing her own thing anyways. But I always knew I wanted to do a home birth. And amongst the times that we're in with COVID and I just, and for me, I have never really felt comfortable in a hospital um, due to some of the things that I've been a part of in the hospital or things that I've witnessed in the hospital. That just wasn't the place for me. I feel like I'm getting off the subject of postpartum, but I'm gonna get back to it. Um, so yeah, I knew I didn't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know do you want. Okay, Ma, I don't even know what I was saying, but um, let's try to bring it back on track. Um, so postpartum for me changed very quick after I got mastitis. Um, and I just soon realized that Pregnancy and delivering is much was much easier than actually having my baby Earthside. In my head, I just was like, you know, my baby is so calm in utero, so I'm gonna have a calm baby. I'm gonna be able to do all these things, and I quickly realized that I could not be Miss Independent anymore. Like, I wasn't eating, I wasn't feeding myself. I mean, I wasn't eating, I wasn't drinking water. Um, I was barely taking care of myself. Showers were like, I was taking showers at like 1 p.m., 2 p.m. I cried so much postpartum just out of like, what am I supposed to be doing? Like, girl, it was a lot. I'm also breastfeeding and I was not, I know everyone's opinions are different, but let me tell you, I told all of my friends who didn't breastfeed, like, why aren't you breastfeeding? Why aren't you doing that? Sis, I get it. It is not easy. Once I started breastfeeding, I'm like, oh, I get why people stop breastfeeding. But I called all my aunties and I'm like, yo, you guys made this look so easy. And it's not for me, at least. So postpartum, I had to deal with realizing that I could not do everything on my own. I, no, I went on a whole rant and I don't even know where I'm at. So let me just talk freely. Can I just talk freely? Can this video not be as organized as I intended it to be? Um, yeah, so postpartum for me was actually very hard. Mastitis, mastitis kicked my butt. I did not know about it, didn't hear of it, didn't even know it existed. To be honest, I just, everything was easy and effortless for me. So I just thought breastfeeding was putting your baby to your breast and that was it. I soon had to ask for help, which for me is like not as natural as um, it should be. And I've realized how the way I grew up in a village is the way that my son would have to grow up in a village. So I needed a lot of help from my mom. I need to vocalize what I needed as a breastfeeding mom. Um, I needed to prioritize myself. I 
100% believe that breastfeeding teaches you about the highest form of self-care and self-love because if you are not taking care of yourself, your baby will not be fed. If you are not drinking, your baby is not eating. If you are not eating, your baby is not eating. If you are stressed out, your baby is not eating. It might be different from person to person, but I'm a very reactive person to my environment, period. So when I was taking that time where I wasn't drinking water, I wouldn't have any type of milk production. If I wasn't eating right or eating um, enough, my milk production was non-existent. If I was stressed out or annoyed or just trying to over to try to do everything, once again, my pr- milk production was non-existent. And I would say the toughest part about that was I didn't know about these things and I educated myself so much and I, my focus was so much on getting my baby here safely and naturally and making sure that we were in tune that I did not do any research or I did not even ask um, my, my sister village anything about postpartum or anything about just breastfeeding period postpartum the first week was like amazing i was in love my baby was on a routine um me being an herb lady i proactively started taking fenugreek fenugreek ended up being bad for my baby um yeah it's a whole another story and i feel like i can talk about that at a different time if you guys are interested in knowing about my breastfeeding journey, which I'm still kind of learning. Um, Yeah, so breastfeeding was and is a journey. I do have a whole lot of content that, you know, in my head, I'm like, I'm gonna do it every single week or two videos in one week. But once again, being a mom sometimes, um, not gets in the way of that, but sometimes my attention isn't necessarily on social media. But I will say, Having a natural birth and then going through a struggle with breastfeeding, I turned to YouTube so much. And when I'm telling you, the moms on YouTube, y'all taught me so much in those times where I felt really stressed out or I felt like the internet wasn't giving me what I needed. My midwife is very, 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 very hands-on and um, will show up and show out for me any time of the day. But I'm also the type of person that I like to do my own research and try to solve a problem first. Um, before asking for help, which sometimes isn't always the best thing. But um, I'm so grateful for that because the mom squad on YouTube is, there's nothing like it. And I've even turned into that mom. And as I'm reading your guys' comments about being a mom or congratulating me on mommyhood, like there ain't no hood like motherhood, let me tell you that first. And I've turned into a whole different person Um, which I'm super happy about, but it's funny to me because I'm everything that I used to make fun of in my friends, um, in a, in a, in a lighthearted way. Um, I just like, you know, when people say you don't know until you're like, it's, it's very, very true. Um, so I'm grateful, super, super grateful for the knowledge that's shared on YouTube. And that's why I feel so called to share my journey because I genuinely had an experience like no one that I know has had and I don't feel like I did anything elaborate or anything exclusive. Um, I feel like, not that I'm manifesting my births for other people, but I feel like people can have a birth like mine or a birth similar to mine or just the birth that they want. So with that being shared with me turning to YouTube and studying on YouTube and watching different YouTube videos, I, in my heart, I just feel like I had this journey and this journey is meant to be shared. A lot of people don't know how to advocate themselves. A lot of people don't even know that they can have, um, that they do have a say-so in the way that they do give birth. And a lot of people are bullied, in my opinion, um, into doing things that they don't necessarily have to do just because they're in that moment of vulnerability and fear where somebody's telling them your baby's under stress or you need to do this or you need to do that. And if more women shared their natural birth story, I believe that other people would seek other options um, in knowing how easy it is to go through the process as I did. So after I was struggling postpartum, my mom really, really, really stepped in and showed up for me and showed up for my family. And because I literally do not know what I would have done without my mom being here helping me, um, I really wanted to reach out and help other women. Let me just say mastitis 
killed my milk supply. And um, there'd be nights where I would have to pump every hour to just make enough for his feeding. Um, and in those nights where I was pumping, I would be thinking about the women who are literally doing this by themselves without a birth partner or without a significant other, without a husband, um, without their mom, without anybody. And for those women who are literally doing it by themselves, I really, um, I get overwhelmed even thinking about it. And it makes me really sad and it makes me want to cry. It makes me emotional knowing that some people just don't have anyone there. So in this video, I also wanted to do postpartum giveaways. And I'm open to hearing what women, I'm, I'm open to hearing what women need postpartum. But my idea of what I wanted to give away, considering this is what helped me so much, is I wanted to gift um, women who are breastfeeding or women who are women who are postpartum who do need help around the house to have somebody clean their house once a week or clean their house twice a week or to offer somebody to come cook or meal prep for them to drop off meals because between those two things, if my mom was not here, it would have been chaos. Um, and I know that some people don't have a village that helps them. I personally grew up with a village. I grew up multi-generationally. And unfortunately, that's just not the way, the way that most people live nowadays. Um, so yeah, for all the moms, postpartum, or just the moms who have multiple kids and that they are doing it by themselves, this giveaway is for you. So I'm gonna try to figure out how I can do this because I don't need you guys to put your guys' business in my comments. But if you wanted to drop a, a comment that you are, um, are that, that you're in that four trimester stage, or if you are a mom with multiple kids, you can either DM me, put something down in the comments. But yes, this is what my pregnancy journey is about. I really want to share what has helped me and I really want to reach out and help um, women who just need that support. A few questions that you guys have asked me, not necessarily about postpartum, but about my birth journey, is one question was, was it as simple as I thought? And I didn't think it was going to necessarily sim be simple, but I knew that it was going to be a deep connection. I think the question, my perception of the question was, was it like easy? And my birth was completely easy. Like I was literally getting my nails done, came home, and then the process just started. Um, I am a little bit of a granny, so I did not take a nap that day. And my baby did come um, later than my bedtime so i wish i would have gotten a little bit more sleep but other than that my birth was easy um, i had a midwife my midwife was not here so we did have an unassisted unmedicated home birth um it was just me my mom and hi and my midwife was on face facetime from time to time but to be honest i was so in tune with my body that I wasn't like pressed to 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 see what my midwife was gonna say. I also knew that my midwife was here. Um, when I was going through my birth process, it was almost like I was kind of replaying different things that had happened, and I was also getting so many downloads. Like it was it was intense. It was like I my birth process was like a deep, 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 deep meditation where my body was just telling me what to do and my baby was guiding me. Another question is, how did you know what to do? So one of the things that I will say is when you have a midwife, look, I'm a, I go hard for my midwife. I go hard for midwifery, period. Because having a midwife is like having somebody who is an extension of your family. Now, I tried the hospital, not the hospital, I, tr I didn't try the hospital, but I tried the doc, the OB route, and it did, didn't resonate with me. I waited longer in the waiting room than I actually did speak to the OB, and when I went, it was very like black and white, how's this, how's that, and it just didn't resonate. Having a midwife is like having a counselor, having a extended member of a family, a mother figure, um, somebody who tells you what you should eat, um, not necessarily giving you a meal plan, but just an open book of information. Um, my midwife helped me with my diet. 
Um, my midwife helped me with um, just being in tune with my body. She gave me certain breathing exercises, meditation, um, breathing exercises, um, just encouraged me to meditate more. And if you see in the video where I kind of did the compilation of different births, one thing that I really loved, it showed you how midwifery is like them coming over to your house and cracking your back, somebody giving you a massage, somebody rubbing your feet, somebody getting your groceries for you, somebody cooking for you, somebody going grocery shopping for you. It's much more of a one-on-one, -on -one, it's much more of one-on-one -on -one care rather than you going, sitting in a waiting room, not really having the attention that you need. And then when your baby decides to show up and come earthside, it's like you go to the hospital and everyone who's in the hospital, come on, you're poking your little head in here. <laughs> My little head, please. Why? Don't talk to me like that on camera, please. Because people might think that, you know, I'm sensitive. And when people talk about me, I might, you know, respond in a certain mm -hmm. way. Okay. But I was on a roll. I forgot what I was saying. But, oh, yeah. So, it's like you have this, you have this doctor and you have an OB and you're ready to deliver your baby. And Can we just take the time to appreciate oh my God. how great she is? Can we just take, okay. just take a moment? <laughs> just take a moment. When she's speaking, do you feel, you feel the same way, right? She's speaking to you for a reason. Like, it's deeper. No, but it's just, it just, it just makes me sad that you spend all that time going to an office and going to an OB and then you go to the hospital and you don't recognize anybody's faces. You don't know anybody in the hospital. Sometimes they try to send you home and be like, nah, you got to go somewhere. You got to labor at home when you're coming for help. When you have a midwife, even if you're in that, even if you don't have an easy birth like I do, your midwife's not going to show up and tell you to go home. Your midwife's going to come for you. Your midwife's going to be there for you. Your midwife's going to educate you. And even though midwifery is a lifestyle, in my opinion, um, and you have to already have that inner knowing that your power is internal versus external, your midwife will affirm to you that you got this, your power, I can't do anything for you, but be here to support you. You have to internalize your power and know that you can do this versus nah, you got to go home. You're only two centimeters. You got to deal with that somewhere else. Um, so yeah, I just, I just, that's my opinion on midwifery and I definitely have a video coming out about that. So if you guys have any questions, please put them down below. Um, I feel like this video is getting everywhere and it was definitely supposed to just be about postpartum, but I definitely, <laughs> but I do want to hear about what you guys have to say. And if you guys have any questions, please put them in the comments because I would love to continue to share my journey. My community is so positive and i'm just grateful that you guys resonate with me and the many changes that you guys have seen me go through on my channel so i appreciate it thank you guys so much and i will see you in the next upload